Hi everybody, I'm back with another video. If you recall in a previous video I showed how to use a 4 inch bench vise to go through and make connectors, make cables, so that you could turn a cable like this nasty dirty one that uh, is just intermittent, not working for a Miss Pac-Man, into a nice beautiful new cable that will last for many many years. Well, one of the problems that you have is trying to figure out how to get some of these things to crimp properly without smashing all the pins. And the hardest one to do are these pesky little ones that have this solder tail connector right here that you'll find on Williams boards. These are a pain in the neck. Now, I'll show you how to take those and make a nice beautiful replacement for it with the Panavice Arbor Press. Now this is a nice little tool I picked up and it's the 502 Arbor Press and the 506 IDC crimp adapter for it. And then you could use these inserts with it. And I've got a variety of different ones. The 510 is cross cut and works well with the IDC connectors like the male ones here that take the uh, dual row dip headers that plug in. They will fit right down in there and the cross cut will fit the groove or the, the little hump down here that polarizes it so that you can insert it one way. Makes it very simple to crimp those. And that's the model 510. It just simply fits in here like this and then when you crimp, push this down you crimp the connector on. The next is the 512 and you gotta be careful if you're if you're looking at these on eBay or buying them used uh, the 512 that I bought looked like this, and it was advertised for dip plugs. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't see a way that a 40-pin dip plug is going to fit into this. It just, it's not going to work. It just does not line up with the, uh, with the slots. Well, it turns out that there are two different models of 512. This is the 512, the dip plug and it fits perfectly for the 40 pins for the dot .600 and the narrower dot .300 connectors that you want to crimp on. The other one turns out to be a 512A. Now this one didn't have the A carved in it so it was a little bit odd but you know it wasn't such a bad thing after all. I was cursing when I opened it up but then I discovered that these connectors that solder in for the Williams board sets fit right into those slots so I can crimp those connectors with this. So let's take a look at uh, making a cable. Now if you recall from the last video I used a pair of scissors. This time I've got a Tyco Electronics model 91220-1. It's a ribbon cutting tool. And this makes short work out of it and you get perfect cuts on the ribbons. So let's just stretch out some ribbon and cut away. But how do you know how long to cut? Well, the easiest way is just to take your old cable and put it on here and measure this puppy up. Now that we've got it measured, let's take the ribbon cutting tool, slide this thing in here, squeeze, and we have a perfect cut. Now for this one, we're going to need the 512 insert, so we'll drop that in the press. We're going to need a couple of the dip plug connectors so I've got those but first the cable I've got is 50 pin and this is 40 so we're gonna have to remove a few strands we'll start off the end that's not closest to the uh, red stripe that signifies pin 1 peel back 10 of them and you just peel these off and now you're down to 40 pin cable so let's insert this puppy and see what we got. So with these connectors it's easier to lay the ribbon into the top because the top is all grooved for this. Each one of these IDP connectors seems to be just a little bit different. And what you're going to face when you deal with these is that the, uh, the cables are not going to fit in there very well. So get it lined up get it in the press. Let's set it down and just a quick little and this is seated. Makes it real simple to go through and to uh, 
put these cables on. Let's do the other side real quick. Making sure to crimp these on the correct way because you don't want to have one facing one direction and the other facing the opposite. And with this press, it makes it nice because you don't have to worry about the connector slipping or the ribbon slipping. You don't have to worry about pins getting bent up by applying too much pressure because they fit down into these slots. I can hold this thing and slide it down into the slot like this. I can see that my cable slipped a little bit so I can adjust it in here. And I could see it right here on the edge that it's in there. And I can come in. And I'm holding this just simply because this one is kind of ornery. This connector, it's not the press, it's just the connector and it doesn't just a little bit on the fickle side because it does not mate with the connector here, the bottom piece, until you start pushing it down. So here we go, we've got it on. Perfectly crimped. Nice cable for a Miss Pac-Man. Now let's look at the one for the Williams board set. So we're going to make an, another one of these. So I'm going to take my old cable, set it up here, Make sure we're getting this the same length. Sliding it down into the ribbon cable cutter. Give it a quick little squeeze. And we're done. This is a 40 pin as well, so we're going to have to peel away 10 of these wires. There we go. Let's take this and slide it in here. Now if you got this little wavy, sometimes you just have to fiddle with it. This particular connector housing has a little slot that you can get the cable into. And once you do, then the rest of it slides right in. Makes it a little bit simpler. There we go. that last little lip over here. And it's just not wanting to cooperate so we can always separate the two on this one. This one's pretty easy to separate and you can see the lips in here that this thing's having to go across. So I'm just going to cheat and take it out and try and get it back in but no it's not going to go. Let's do the other end simply because if you can't get one end in, the other end should go. There we go. Now, cut that lined up. Put the other block in, the 512A. Put the cable down in there. And this one's a lot easier to work with because the cable is going to stay in place inside that connector. And there we go. Crimped. All the pins are straight. Nice and neat. Easy to do. Let's do the other side. Now with the other side, it's a little different. One of the things you have to pay attention to is where that little piece is that polarizes this connector because you don't want to put this in the wrong direction. Now on some board sets it won't matter because you know they, they just have loose pins, but if you have that plastic housing that expects that little notch, you know, this to fit in that little notch, you know. Guess what? If you put it on backwards, you're going to be in a world of hurt. So let's swap this out. Put the 510 in. Put this one in. A little click from the connector. And it's done. Very simple to do. 
I, I love this thing. This thing is, is a great tool. It's a little pricey. You're looking at about $175, $180 plus shipping for the press. Some more money for the IDC adapter, and then you're looking at money for each of these slugs that go in here that uh, allow you to crimp these cables and connectors without any problems. But I highly recommend it. It's a, it's a great tool. Uh, just beware of the 512 dip versus the 512, you know, the 512 versus 512. A. Uh, that will get you if you're not buying new. Uh, and went back and forth with Panavice on this one trying to figure out what's going on and that's when I found out that this is the 512A and they were nice enough to confirm it and I just ordered this one straight off their website so I would have the 512 with the uh, dip connections. Now this little tool right here you can buy this many different places on the web. I bought this surplus uh, it's about a $148 tool. Uh, don't hate me, but I paid $16 for it at a surplus store. Uh, great tool. Uh, <laughs> very, very, very well worth the money. It, it's really easy to, to cut the cable at a perfect 90 degree angle, and you don't have to worry about going through and having to straighten it up after you're done. I mean, it, it just, it's nice. I mean, look at that edge on there. It, that's just beautiful. <laughs> So there you have it, an all, another way to make these cables. You, know, you can use the 4-inch bench vise. They, they work great. Uh, you know, if you're looking for something to do on a budget, if you're just starting out, great. If you're looking to assemble a lot more cables, like these are going to be cables that I will be assembling and, and placing on my website for sale, I went ahead and invested in the uh, Arbor Press and the different inserts. Hope you enjoyed it, and hope you have a great day.